Hey guys, so today we're going to be replacing uh, brake rotors and pads on a 2010 Acura TSX. And this should hold true for anywhere between 09 TSX to 2014 TSX and some other accords as well. So what we're going to do is we removed, first of all, make sure when you jack, um, use a stand. Do not leave it just on a jack, just not safe. So once you do that, take your rim off, the lug nuts, five lug nuts off. Uh, as you've done it already and then use an impact driver something like this to loosen these two screws if you have them you might not have them depending on the age of the car or if the last brake job was done they removed and never replaced it so once you loosen them up uh, there are two screws in the back that holds a caliper right here they're size 12 uh, mm so use shorter long ones loosen one on top one on bottom they hold the brake pins in here, which pretty much expands and collapses uh, your uh, caliper piston in here. So once you loosen them up, basically take them out. Uh, set them aside. Just make sure to keep them safe. Don't lose them. Um, do the same thing on the bottom. Take it out. Um, once you have that off, uh, you're... You're ready to take your caliper, uh, your caliper off. Keep in mind this is rear brake. So on this car, your handbrake is behind here. So there are two lines that run one here and one underneath. So just try to get it out of the way without bending or breaking the line. So so this is now the caliper is off. Um, once we're ready to put the new ones in, we're going to push this caliper uh, piston back in. But for now, we're just going to set it aside and give yourself as much room as possible because you will need it to take off uh, the rotor. Once you have that off, um, you can use something, a screwdriver or something, and take these off, uh, your old brake pads. And we're going to lubricate these pins afterwards. But for now, what we're going to do is, um, on here, um, we're going to take uh, one screw here and then one on the bottom, which is right here. Um, you need a 17 socket uh, to take those off. So in order to get these off, they're 17, they might be super hard. Uh, there's one here and then one down below. Um, what you can do is you can use a PB blaster um, or WD-40 or something like that, but we ended up using PB blaster. Uh, spray it off. Uh, and then you should be able to use. And if you have problems, what you can do is use like a extender or use like some sort of pry bar to get more uh, leverage on there and you can open it up. So once you get those open, just take those off. Um, So once you get these bolts out, um, you'll notice that it's ready to uh, bring the um, this out. So just bring it out, slide it straight out. You will notice uh, these were either going to be really hard or they're going to come right out like see these. So what we're going to do is we're going to open them up, um, grease them and put a new pads and new pins in there. So, And most likely your this is the outside pad. So you can see it has thickness where the inner pad. Um, so if you notice the thickness of the inside pad versus the outside pad, um, I know there's some bad lighting, but essentially it's less than even half of what the outside pad was. And most likely that's what's going to happen because your piston is on the inside. And then also, um, depending on the wear of the pad, the wear indicator will start uh, running against your rotor and making screeching noises. Off, and these screws come right off of here. Um, if they don't come out at all using the impact driver, what you want to do is probably use a drill, titanium drill bits, and drill them out, essentially. Uh, but they should come out using a impact driver that I showed earlier. Now you're ready to take that rotor off. And the rotor might be a little stuck, so you might have to tap it with a, a hammer. So our, uh, ours is a little stuck, so what I ended up doing is just tap it, and it comes off. Um, once you have it off, 
just set it aside and get ready to put the new one in. Um, make sure uh, once you're doing the new ones um, to clean them with a brake cleaner um, because there's a lot of uh, grease and stuff on here. And obviously my gloves are dirty so it's going to get dirty again. So what you want to do is once you put it on and the whole brake job is done, just wipe it with a brake cleaner again. That's one thing you will be doing afterwards. So line it up. So basically what I'm trying to line up is the bolt and the little screw that I showed earlier um, that we're going to be using. So line up the holes, the big hole, the small ones. Um, so essentially it will be this one you'll notice. This is flat. This has a little engraving in it. So once I have that on, these screws can go back in here. Um, if you don't have these screws and they're missing or something, don't panic. It's okay. You'll be fine. It's just uh, holding the rotor in there. But once you have your tire and everything else and the caliper on, you'll be fine. It just happens to be that I still have it, so we're just putting those back in. And there might be cases that you drill them out and you don't have it. You can also buy from a hardware store, or Advanced Auto, or AutoZone, um, other stores, uh, new screws if you need to. Okay. So uh, basically what you want to do is you want to take them out, clean them, put new grease in there, um, and lubricate them. And then they should be easy slide in. If they're really hard, you might have to use force to take them out or a tool. But essentially once you're done, uh, push them back in and the rubber gets back on and you can see there's some movement and that's how it should be Whereas this one obviously they're worn out and they're broken from here uh, So essentially you can get new ones or if they're working still you can reuse them um, But make sure they're lubricated and cleaned afterwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up putting them back in uh, Yes, I could have cleaned them a little bit better but with the essence of time Trying to get it done. Basically, now use your 17 meter, uh, millimeter bolt. Bolt this uh, holder back in, caliper holder. Uh, one goes on the bottom, one goes on the top. Once you get them and the bolts back in, you will notice that they don't slide out, they're loose because I still need to tighten them up. Um, so you get it all the way tightened up and then you're going to use your ratchet and tighten these bolts up. And once we're done, we're going to put the new pads on and the new pins and everything. So I ended up taking these old uh, shim kits or pins out. Um, the plate covers these are the new ones that come with your brake in the brake box um, two things you can use the new ones if you don't get the new ones and you can use a brake cleaner clean them out really good and grease them really nice because obviously you can see um, they are really dirty and started to rust a bit so if you got new ones we ended up getting new ones so we're going to end up dropping these in and using these um, you can do them before you put this caliper holder back on or afterwards um, i've done it both ways so they go in just like this and push them down on both ends and they will go in. If they give you a little trouble, just use a flathead and push these down so they sit flush and flat. And once they do, you'll be good. What you can do is take a little bit of the grease and grease this, the bottom piece um, right here. Just make sure don't get on the cal uh, rotor at all. And then same thing on the inside. Um, because that's the contact points for your uh, for your brake pads. So we're gonna take the new pad in. These are the one side of the pads. Just make sure that you angle them right. But keep in mind, if there's a wear indicator, which is this piece tab that's sticking out, that always goes on the inside. Um, and this one will be the outside piece. So what we're gonna do is take this, line it up, and put it in here. Um, either or you can start from the bottom then push the top in or start from the top and then push the bottom in um, and that's how it would sit flush uh, same thing on the outside start right here
and then push it in. Once you push them, that's how they should sit. Um, now what we're gonna do is take the brake um, piston pusher, put it on here, push, you can see the pistons out, it's supposed to sit flush with this rim around. Um, and then we're gonna put some grease on this side, this side, close up the caliper, and put the tire back on. So I ended up getting renting this tool from a hardware store, uh, Advanced Auto, AutoZone. Um, basically, uh, comes like this, there's a bunch of extensions. Put it on and then line it up with the caliper, uh, with the piston like this. If you have the piston, which is straight, you can also basically use like a C-clamp and do it this way and push it in. But since this is the special one, we're gonna use a proper brake tool to push it back in. Um, what you can do is on your hood, open the hood up, open up your brake reservoir, and open the cap when you do this on in the hood. So as you can see, uh, sorry for the clarity from the picture, it's moving and it's gonna turn to go back in. So using the brake uh, piston pusher, I have actually pushed it back in. Uh, what you can do is you can grease this area a little. Um, and spread it around if you need to, you don't have to. Um, and now you're ready um, to push it back in. Uh, so what you're gonna do is, obviously remember, your brake is on there too, handbrake. We're gonna take this and slide it right back on here. Uh, push these pins in and your caliper should slide right on. Um, obviously, as you guys remember, I told you we're gonna put some grease on it. We didn't do it. Um, so we're gonna take, take it off and put grease on there. So obviously I'm not trying to get my fingers dirty or my gloves dirty, so using a flathead and just make sure you spread it all around. Um, you don't have to go crazy with the grease, but just put it on there. That's your contact point. Um, and then put your caliper back on. And then once it's back on, what you're gonna do is line up your screws that we took off, the number 12s, and you're gonna put those back on here. Um, so put these in, and then put this one in. Just make sure they're fully lined up when you do them, otherwise they're not going to go in, and you'll feel them. Obviously, this one, you can see it's in. And this one is not in. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten these. So once you've tightened these two bolts, uh, make sure everything is good. Uh, tighten these, make sure they're tightened. And now you're ready to put your tire back on and put your lug nuts back on. Keep in mind, um, take your jack stand out, lower your car, and then go for a test drive and test your brakes before you do any serious driving or highway driving. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, subscribe, like the button below. I'll go from there, thank you.